Hello, hello, hello. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you may be. Welcome back to my channel, my loverlies. If you've never been here before, I'm so happy you found me. Uh, thank you so much for clicking on my video. I do so hope that you will like and subscribe before you leave. Become part of the mama family. Mom's got your back, at least for makeup's concerned, and definitely when that makeup is cheap. Guys, today is True Love Tuesday. I bet you thought I forgot about it this week. I'm not gonna lie, I kind of did. <laughs> I kind of did. Guys, I've been so busy. There's just not enough hours in the day and I just 100% spaced. Y'all, I woke up this morning and I was like, oh my gosh, I didn't do True Love Tuesday. So uh, today's story is gonna be about Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall. This is a really, really beautiful love story uh, and, not, and not quite so uh, uh, expected, really. Uh, I think this story is super, super cute. Uh, you know, they just don't make love stories like this anymore. I just so, in, I just so love telling these old, like, old Hollywood love stories. It's always like the meat cutes and the, and you know, and, and the drama and the spiciness and it's just so much fun. Uh, so we're going to be talking about them today. Really, really great story. Uh, so stick around. We're also going to be doing this I look right here. I wanted to do something that a color combo that I hadn't played with uh, before. And also, guys, I tend to get wrapped up in my stories and in telling you guys the stories and don't really focus on the, the, the work part of it so awful much. So I wanted to do something that was pretty um, simple and fairly easy to accomplish. So that's what I did. I did this really beautiful smoky pink and gray kind of eye look. I love pink and gray together. I think they're so, so beautiful. I really love pink and brown together. There's just something that is so uh, soft and kind of just... Mm, I don't know, wispy maybe, or very, very feminine to me. I just think they're so, so pretty. This is what the look looks like. So I did a little bit of a half cut crease. We've got a little bit of shimmer going on, a little bit of smokiness, super, super wearable uh, for all of my neutral lovers out there that are trying to play with just a little bit of color. This would be a great way to do it because uh, it's still a super, super neutral looking eye. It's not like a bright, uh, shocking uh, pop of pink. It's just a really soft, kind of very simple eye look. I'm really, really into it. I think this is perfect for everyday wear. And then we just did a little bit of smoke on the lower lash line just to bring everything together. And it's beautiful. Super, super wearable. Very easy, very simple. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, to achieve this look, I'm going to use two different shadow palettes. So the first of which is this one. So this is my... I, it doesn't have the writing on it. I'm not sure why, uh, but this is my uh, BYS uh, Smoky Palette. Uh, I love this thing so much. I actually have a smaller version of this, and I had one of these in my giveaway, uh, and I went to my Family Dollar the other day, and they had another one, so I definitely picked it up. I love this thing so, so much. You have every color of black and gray in here that you will ever need. Uh, you've also got some really beautiful uh, silvers, it's just really fantastic smoky eye palette. These are super, super affordable. I picked these up at my like family dollar for like two or three dollars and they're great, great quality. I think people kind of stay away from them because they think they're cheap and not good quality, but they're so fantastic. So love this. We're going to use this one today. Did I say BYS? I did, didn't I? Okay, so we're going to use that one. And then we're also going to use the Juvia's Place Sweet Pinks palette. I love this sucker too. I love this so, so much. We're going to be using this one and this one and a little bit of this one as well. Really just kind of trying to, to, to merge these two color colors together as best we can. Uh, this one is really affordable as well. These little six pan palettes are freaking always on sale. So you can almost always uh, pick one of these palettes up or... On a, on a pretty good discount. I think I only paid like six or seven bucks for this and I think it's worth that price all day long. Really, really love that. So we're using this, we're using the Smoky palette and we're just gonna get, we're gonna hop, jump, skip right into this story. So uh, in the beginning, uh, when Lauren met Humphrey, uh, I'm probably gonna end up calling him Bogart or Bogey because that is what that was what she nicknamed him. Uh, so that is probably what I will refer to him as uh, in this story and I'll just call her Lauren. So I have my notes right here so I'm not telling you guys any lies. Uh, you guys know I don't have a memory for nothing. My memory is absolutely shot. Uh, so if I look over in this direction, it's because I'm looking at my, at my pad. I'll show you guys my big old pad of notes right here just to make sure that I'm not telling y'all any lies. 
Uh, but our story starts out in the year, what year does it start out? I think this starts out in the year, I think it's 1942, 1943. 1943. Hmm. So in the year of 1943, Miss Thorne Bacall uh, heads to Hollywood, right? Uh, so she is an 18 year old little girl. She is still very much a little girl, but still very worldly. Uh, people who knew her always said that she always had like a really solid head on her shoulders. Uh, she was Jewish, Jewish and raised in a Jewish household. Um, so she was, she was smart. She was worldly. She knew what she was doing. She was, uh, you know, pretty well put together, uh, wasn't prone to flights of fancy or hysterics, anything like that. She was always just really solid, uh, very driven, very uh, she educated, knew what she wanted and knew how to get there, knew how to get it. Um, so in, for, in 1943, uh, she comes to Hollywood, right? And she, guys, she was absolutely stunning. I don't know if you uh, have ever seen the have to, to have, or is it the haves and have not, or to have and have not? To have and have not. I don't know if you guys have ever seen that movie before, but it's, it's guys, it's a classic. It is a classic. And when I think of Lauren Bacall, I think of just this beautiful, rich chestnut hair and these absolutely piercing, like, crystal blue smoky eyes she had bedroom eyes you know those eyes that never really fully open um kind of like betty davis eyes she just had those really dreamy she just had this dreamy look about her so she just so very romantic looking right and then humphrey bogart is this written is this very hairy dark handsome kind of uh here's looking at you kid kind of guy you know very manly like a manly man very um you know, just old school, just old school charm, old school charisma, just mm, kind of like a match made in heaven, right? And again, I'm talking and not working, so we've got to fix that. I'm going to go in starting with my BYS palette. I'm going to put my hair back. We're going to go in to the BYS palette and we're going to go in with first this really beautiful kind of deep charcoal gray. This one, this one right here. And I'm going to start uh, putting that on the outer corner of my eye. I'm going to use a small kind of fluffy blender to do that. Let's use this one. This is my no name, small fluffy blending brush. And I'm going to start putting that on the outer portion of my eye. Taking it through the crease, but not all the way through my crease. Just like that. So, to like kind of a match made in heaven. So she comes to Hollywood, she meets uh, with the this director named Howard Hawks, and he instantly recognizes that she's she's a star, she's a star in the making, she's absolutely stunning. She is she's got charisma, she's got spunk, she's got charm. He's got to put her in a movie. Uh, so he actually asks her, he says, who would you rather star with? And he gives her a choice of either Cary Grant or uh, Bogey. And she was like, Bogart? Ew. She literally said that. She was like, ew. Um, but she ended up being cast in To Have and To Have and To Have Not. To Have and To Have Not uh, alongside Humphrey Bogart. And guys, this is this is this is where the magic starts this is where the magic starts so uh on the first day guys you have to remember this is her first movie the first time she's uh you know really acting the first time she's really had a job so the first day of shooting she is losing her mind she's absolutely terrified she doesn't know what to do and she's literally sitting on set shaking she's trembling she just like doesn't she's just ah nerves we've all been there right we've all had the jitters we all know what that is so humphrey goes up humphrey yeah humphrey hmm, humphrey <laughs> humphrey goes up to her and he's like it's okay it's gonna be okay you're gonna be fine uh relax and then if anybody has watched her movies you guys know you'll know that the that look her signature look right it's kind of where she tucks her chin and she kind of looks up. And uh, that was synonymous, synonymous with her back in the day. That was her look. It was like her signature smolder. If there was someone that smoldered, like if there was someone who like 
invented the smolder uh, at least a female version of it. I definitely, definitely think that it is Miss Lauren McCall um, because she was trembling so badly. Uh, Humphrey was like, just tuck your chin, try to try to keep yourself together. Uh, so she listened and that's what she did. But because she was tucking your chin, uh, she ended up having to look up at Humphrey and the director loved that look and loved that kind of uh, sexy smolder uh, thing that he actually continued to have her do that and that actually became her kind of like signature her signature look but he's the one he, uh, he was the one that actually uh, advised her to do that I, I can't do it because I'm nowhere near as sexy as Lauren Bacall is but she like tucks her chin she like just tucks her chin just a little bit and then kind of I don't know she kind of looks up anyway she does it a whole lot better than I do um but it kind of stuck and it was coined the look in Hollywood right so after that day, this is when the magic began. Uh, they, uh, after that, uh, Humphrey uh, was heard telling her that it's going to be okay. We're going to have fun. We're going to have fun together. And indeed they did. Uh, this set them up for a, a beautiful, beautiful life together. A beautiful, beautiful marriage. So as everything is going on uh, and, you know, as she's getting her, uh, as they're getting in to the movie and they're filming, uh, and she's like perfecting her look. You know, one of the most famous lines out of that movie is uh, she says, well, you know how to whistle, don't you, Steve? You just put your lips together and blow. And I can't say it like she can, but oh, that line is just everything. So that's a line from that movie. And she just, it just kind of blew up from there. And another thing about this movie is uh, they actually filmed it chronologically, which is so super rare for, for any kind of movie. Uh, a lot of times, you know, they just kind of skip around and, and whatever uh, location is available, they'll shoot that scene and this, that, the other thing. But because they were shooting on the lot and everything was like super under control, they ended up just deciding to let the chemistry between Lauren and Boki just kind of uh, grow naturally. So they shot the movie chronologically. So every, all of the chemistry and all of the, all of the, the, all of the, the just ugh, that you see in the movie is so genuine because they're actually learning. Uh, they're actually, you know, those feelings are real. Like they're actually starting to feel those things in the movie and in real life. Uh, so it just, it, that's another one of the things that just makes that movie so much, so much better. Um, but during, uh, oh, I just had somewhere I was going with that. Um, oh, yeah. But because the chemistry between them work and talk work and talk but because the chemistry between the two of them was so uh was so good uh the director actually ended up rewriting the movie because in the original draft i'm going into this uh later kind of uh matt gray now uh because the original draft of that movie was completely different Bogart's character Steve was actually supposed to end up uh, with a different woman. He was actually supposed to romance and seduce a different female character and Lauren was not supposed to be uh, not supposed to end up being the main love interest but because their chemistry was so was so insane uh, the director just ended up having the movie rewritten so that they could uh, you know, so that he could exploit the charisma and the chemistry to the best of his ability. And y'all, it worked because the movie was a freaking smash hit, right? So as, you know, as every the filming is going and everything is coming to a close, uh, about two or three weeks into filming the movie, uh, Humphrey Bogart, this is, this is where the romance starts, the true rom romance. About two or three weeks into filming, Humphrey leaned in to kiss Lauren and... After that, uh, he was, they were always in each other's dressing rooms uh, and uh, friends of uh, Bogey say that they had never heard him giggle. Like, can you imagine a grown man, especially like a grown man that's like, like kind of alpha and real strong. Could you imagine a man like that giggling? Because they said he giggled. He said that Lauren made him giggle like a schoolgirl. And I think when a woman or when anybody can do that to another person, that's love, baby. That is love right there. So, uh, 
they started and they, they started uh, having a romance. They started an affair. Now at this time, uh, Bo uh, Bogey, he was 25 years older than Lauren. So I think he, he was 43 at this time and she was 18. So crazy, crazy age difference, right? But you know, sometimes women just need an older man. Sometimes that's just what, what needs to happen. I agree. I like older men. Um, and he was such a handsome man anyway. Just a very burly, just kind of, ugh, kind of man. And it would be difficult, super, super difficult not to fall for him. Um, so, but he was, uh, not only was he 25 years her senior, but he was also married. Uh, now his wife, Mayo, that was her name. Uh, her name was Mayo and she had problems y'all. Uh, so she was a raging alcoholic. Uh, and by this time, uh, she is not only Humphrey's wife, but she's his third wife. So this man has walked down the aisle, down the aisle three separate times. The first two times he was married were two actresses and, uh, he was, he was very, very much a traditional, very old school kind of guy, right? Uh, he, uh, he didn't believe that work and careers mixed. Um, and he just, he, he wanted, he wanted a homemaker, right? Didn't really choose women like that. He didn't, I don't know. That's what he wanted, but that's not what he went for anyway. So he had been married three times been divorced twice he was on his third marriage and uh for some reason he just did he he felt so guilty leaving his wife right he didn't want to leave her he didn't want he, he I think part of it is he just didn't want to be to fail again and you know I can understand that I can understand that a hundred percent I can understand the not wanting to fail and the not wanting to to hurt someone and I think part of it also was because she was so much younger than him. I am not, I don't think he was like a hundred percent sure about the fact that, you know, this was his person. I don't think he was positive about the fact that she was going to be the rest of his life. But as filming progressive progresses and as he falls more and more madly in love with her, um, his relationship with wife with his wife Mayo gets worse and worse and worse now she is a raging alcoholic uh and actually the year before filming for this movie started uh she actually had stabbed him so and it was well known in in town uh that she was abusive both verbally and physically uh it's never said that he touched her he never laid a hand on her um but she was a raging alcoholic and would go on binges and just went absolutely insane and uh it was even rumored that they had to have a, a carpenter on call uh to come and fix the things that she would break because she would put holes through the walls she'd put holes through doors so definitely was a super, super uh, dysfunctional relationship. And uh, Lauren was aware that he was married. He didn't hide this from her. And as their relationship progressed and as their affair um, progressed, uh, you know, they would do, they would have late night phone calls. And she said very often Humphrey would call her at three o'clock in the morning um, when his wife would pass out in a drunken stupor. And he'd be like, okay, are you ready? Let's go. And at this time, guys, remember, she's still 18 years old. So she is still very much living at home with her mother. And her mother really, really disapproved of this relationship. Uh, she was like, you need to stop messing around with married men. Uh, you're, I raised you better than this, this and that and the other thing, which is true. Uh, and what I think is so funny is that so many of these stories uh, are, I mean, cheaters, 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 man everybody's married everybody's looking for something better and, 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 and you know it's so crazy because that on-screen chemistry really does translate into real life sometimes and sometimes it's just too hard to ignore it's just too hard to ignore it um so he was married very very dysfunctional rela relationship uh her mother disapproved of this relationship and then not only that but remember when we talked about that hawkins guys or that hawks is was it what was his name howard hawks so howard hawks the director right well so <coughs> excuse me when he hired uh lauren i believe and he was married too but when he hired lauren uh he had every intention of seducing her right she's this brand new starlet she's new to town she's fresh and it's like a shiny new toy right 
everybody wants to play with it first. And he had every intention of seducing her and making her his mistress. Uh, but he was super, super PO'd because, of course, Humphrey got there first. So because of this, he made life for Lauren on set really, really difficult. And this just makes me feel like it is so, like the Me Too movement and all of that just goes back way further than any of us even realize, probably since the dawn of time. Um, but he kept threatening her, uh, this Hawks guy, the director, he would threaten her. He would threaten to uh, sell her a contract to a lesser, a smaller studio. He would threaten to take her off of the movie. So she was really, really scared to actually be in an open relationship because at this point, nobody really knows uh, that they're like, they're kind of sneaking around and people are kind of suspecting, but nobody really knows that they're in, you know, th that they're having an affair. They all just know that they really have like their sexual chemistry there and there's like, you know, there's heat, but nobody knows that they're like stoking the fire. So, uh, they're sneaking around, but this director guy found out that they were actually, you know, a pair, a duo, a thing, and was not happy and was and, and made life for Lauren super, super difficult. And then actually, so it got so bad to the point where Humphrey actually had to burst in and was mad, like fighting mad. And Lauren was in tears and actually it got so difficult and so bad on set that the head of the studio was actually called and he had to be made to, to, to put Mr. Hawks in his place. Um, because of course they're not gonna, they're not gonna replace Lauren uh, as the director wanted to do. Because I mean, she's like, she's what's, she's half of this uh, pair that's making this movie exactly what they want it to be. They're not gonna replace her, they're gonna replace you. So Mr. Hawks kind of sucked it up and, and was better after that, but definitely had a thing for Lauren. Humphrey got there first though. Uh, so after, uh, you know, after the, things are coming to a close on the movie and they're preparing to say goodbye to each other and they're on the phone one night and his wife, Humphrey's wife in a drunken stupor gets on the phone and she's like, she, uh, she says her, her exact words were, uh, what were her words? Because I know I have it in quote, quote, quotations. Something about who's going to wash his socks. She said, she said, you Jewish B word. Uh, quit talking to my husband. Uh, you're on set, but who's at home washing his socks? She said something to that effect. And after that, they really kind of stopped messing around. Uh, he, I, I think Humphrey really did have feelings for his wife uh, at one point because he really did find it so difficult, uh, very, very difficult uh, to leave her. So I think that there was a uh, real love there at some point, uh, but her drunkenness and her, uh, uh, you know, abuse of alcohol really just kind of killed that slowly, but surely. And then the last day of filming came. Oh, how pretty is that? Nice. Lots of depth. We're getting it nice and deep. Kind of building up this gray. On the outer corner so the last day of filming arrives and they have to say goodbye and they're both like broken they're both really really broken about it and Humphrey was quoted uh, he actually sent her a note uh, Lauren a note on the last day of filming and she kept it uh, and in, in an interview she actually uh, she she pulled it out and uh, what did it say I'm gonna read it to you guys it says uh, filming ended in May of 1944. Uh, Bogey sent Lauren a note. Says, "I know what it, I know what was meant by to say goodbye is to die a little, because as because when I walked away from you that last time and saw you standing there, so darling, I did die a little in my heart." Um, they met a little bit. I mean, isn't that so sweet? I wish men really, I, I wish men still did that. I wish men still sent love notes. I wish, I really do. Because I just think like things like that are just, oh, they're just the sweetest thing ever. Um, and 
you know, filming was over. They were no longer seeing each other anymore. Uh, during filming, they had either met up in dressing rooms or there was a golf club near the studio uh, that they would meet up at. Um, or she said that they very, very often met up in parked cars on dimly lit streets. Couldn't you imagine? Can you imagine like the excitement of it all? I mean, it's got to suck just a little bit because you can't like be open and profess your love for the person you're so crazy about but just like the scandal of it all and the intrigue and she said they very very often uh met up in, di uh, in you know on dimly lit streets i just think it's romantic it's romantic i mean it's not great for the wife but the wife really wasn't that great of a person and lauren wasn't really cheating on anybody so i'm okay with that um but after summer ended and they really didn't have a, 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 a an option of seeing each other again every day. Uh, she said that in, in an interview, she said that they met up a couple times throughout the summer, but for the most part, things just kind of fizzled out, but they never ever forgot each other. And of course, uh, Humphrey remained married to his wife. And, uh, you know, as things went on, they actually, because the uh, first movie they filmed together, did so well they were actually cast together again i think they were cast together again uh, i think maybe the next year or the year i think the next year in fall of that year and they were uh they were reunited for the movie the big sleep now this is one of my all-time favorite movies i love this movie so so very much um if you guys haven't seen it, definitely go check it out. Uh, so they were reunited for this. And uh, this is when Humphrey started to get more, uh, much more serious about Warren. And he started to really understand things at home were getting worse and worse. Uh, he told uh, his wife that she needed to shape up or he was done. And she actually uh, got better for a little bit. And uh, he told Lauren, he was like, I love my wife. Uh, I don't think he said I love my wife, but I think he said I owe it to her to give her one more shot. And uh, she she told him, and these are her quotes, uh, she told him, I respect your decision, but that doesn't mean I have to like it. Uh, so they, they, they're filming this movie and his wife is doing really well. She's not drinking. Um, but as, as I said, they started filming in the fall of that year, but by Christmas time, by Christmas time, his wife has flown into, ooh, my pad's trying to fall over by Christmas time. His wife has flown into a, another binge. She, she has attacked him again. And at that point he felt comfortable enough to say, okay, I'm done. I'm done. I'm leaving you. I'm not going to do this anymore. And he did, he did. He left his wife and, uh, he very like very quickly, very quickly went after a divorce. Uh, the divorce was settled pretty quickly and I think they were divorced. Oh yeah. Uh, they were divorced on May 10th, May 10th, 1945. Right. So they, yeah, so they met in 43. So this is two years later. So he, div he divorced his right wife in 1945, uh, on May 10th. Right. And married Lauren on May 20. First. <laughs> he gave it 11 days, y'all. <laughs> he gave it 11 days, 11 days of mourning a failed marriage. And then he married Lauren Bacall. He married her on one, on their, uh, one of their mutual friends farms, uh, their estate in Ohio. And they lived a very quiet life. Uh, so, uh, I'm, I'm trying, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to read. Okay. So, uh, they lived a very, very quiet life. Uh, and at the wedding, actually, uh, you know, it was recorded and uh, all that good stuff, but at the wedding, uh, Humphrey actually cried during, uh, while reading his vows. I think Lauren was the true love of his life. Uh, and he stayed with her until he, until his death. They had a really, really great life together. Um, after they got married, and this is when him coming, uh, him being a more of a traditionalist kind of comes into into play a little bit more. Uh, because after they got married, Lauren actually took a step back from Hollywood. Um, she still did a little work here and there, but for the most part, uh, she basically quit Hollywood. And uh, Humphrey was uh, in an interview when he asked. Uh, when he was asked about it, he said, uh, his, and his quote was, she is my wife. And he said it so proud. He was like, I'm proud she's my wife. And she stays at home and she takes care of me. And I think that, uh, you know, maybe that might not rub too well with some women uh, now. But 
I, I guess I'm kind of old fashioned too, because I enjoy staying at home, taking care of my husband. I enjoy, I enjoy my life at home. I enjoy my children. I enjoy the little world that we have created uh, together here. Um, and even though I did work and I was the, the main breadwinner for a very, very long time, I was so happy when I was able to really just take a step back and enjoy being a wife and enjoy being a mother. And she said she never regretted it. She never regretted it. Not one time, guys, I'm not going to be able to finish this eye. Uh, she said she never reg regretted it. Not one time. Uh, they ended up having two children, a boy and a girl and remained in like happily wedded bliss for 11 years, I believe. Humphrey continued to work and make movies while she stayed at home. Uh, and they, they built a really, really beautiful life together. I'm trying to get better at talking and doing my cut crease at the same time, but it is so much more difficult Than it probably should be. So she took a step back. She stayed at home. Had her children. Had her life. Took care of her husband. And they were very, very happy. Very content. Uh, and they stayed that way for 11 years. Until Humphrey was. Diagnosed with. Uh, cancer of the esophagus. And he got really, really sick. And he ended up having surgery to try to fix it, but he never got any better and died very soon after. And uh, when she was asked about, uh, when she was asked about it, uh, in, uh, if uh, when she was asked about if she uh, regretted giving up her career for her marriage she was actually quoted as saying I want to read this quote to you guys she was actually quoted as saying uh, okay I'm, I'm, I'm coming. I'm coming. Oh, before he died, before he died, I missed something. So before he died, uh, he actually uh, filmed, uh, you know, she stayed at home. She took care of the kids. She took care of Humphrey, but uh, they were always together and he never, uh, they never cheated on uh, either one. They both stayed extremely loyal to the other and anywhere that Humphrey went, uh, Lauren went as well. So in uh, one of his, one of, uh, one of his, uh, later films called Key Largo. Uh, uh, no, not Key Largo. In The African Queen. Uh, he was actually, it was like filmed on uh, on location and he actually, Lauren actually went with him. So she left her children at home and she packed up and they moved, they shipped off to Africa and had the time of their lives there. He actually ended up winning an Academy Award for that movie, which was absolutely fantastic. And he did a couple of other ones. He did um, dark, uh, they worked, both of them worked together on a couple of more films. They both did. They did Dark Passage in 1947, and then they did Key Largo in 1948. Those were both before African Queen. And then, uh, after that, she stopped working and he filmed African Queen. And then after that, he got, uh, oh, when she was asked about if she regretted it, she said, I'd have had just my career. I would have missed out on bogey, on my children, and on the very substance of life. And I'm glad that I took a step back because I didn't get to enjoy it for very long. After, uh, fairly shortly after uh, he filmed uh, African Queen, uh, he was he was uh, diagnosed with esophageal uh, cancer of the esophagus, and uh, he uh, he never got any better. Uh, so again, he did have surgery. 
and they tried to fix it, uh, but it didn't, it, it, he never got any better. Uh, so he ended up dying very, very shortly afterward. And uh, through this, she never left his side. She stayed devoted to him throughout this entire time. Never, ever regretted uh, the choice that she made. Uh, she said uh, in, a, in a quote, about that. Uh, she said, you know, some people never get to experience, uh, the love, a love like Bogey and I got to share. And she said, I wouldn't have traded a year of it for a lifetime of happiness. They really, truly did love each other. So after Humphrey died. I'm just kind of packing that on and onto the center of the lid. Now I'm going to tap the outline of this concealer just to kind of fade it in to the eye a little bit. But after he died, so Humphrey was very good friends with a Mr. Hank, uh, Hank, Frank Sinatra. Uh, he was really, really good friends with Frank Sinatra. Um, and after Bogart's death, um, Lauren actually grew really, really close uh, to Frank, and they actually ended up getting engaged. Uh, they didn't fool around while Humphrey was sick. They kept everything super, super uh, respectful, and they didn't start to date or see each other romantically until after he died. Um, but they did end up getting, uh, they did end up getting engaged. It didn't work out. Uh, it didn't work out, and she ended up marrying a man named uh, Jason Robard. And her uh, relationship with Jason was not the best. Uh, he was a raging alcoholic, much like uh, Humphrey's first wife. And she said uh, in an interview that he was just way too difficult to live with. Um, so she just, she jumped out of that really, really quickly. And after her second marriage, she really started to focus on her career again. I'm going to go into this kind of slightly uh, deeper mauve color. This is the blushed rose palette, not the sweet pinks. That's why the colors in here are different. So I'm using the blushed rose. I thought it was the sweet pinks. I'm so silly sometimes. I'm going to go into this kind of like deeper rose tone. And use that just out here. For a little bit of depth on the outer portion. And to kind of fade into that black a little bit more. And give us a little bit of a smoother transition. But both of these formulas work really, really well together. Really, really pretty. Um, so after her second marriage, uh, she decided that she was done. And she started uh, to really focus on her career again. And uh, she had nobody had really forgotten about her. Uh, she was still Lauren Bacall. And at this point, she's still pretty young. Uh, she married Bogart when she was uh, when she was 18, when she was 20. Uh, so she married him when she was 20. They were married for 11 years and then a little time after that. So she's in her early 40s at this time. Still young, still beautiful. Uh, so she moved to New York and she uh, became a Broadway star. Uh, she still did movies. Uh, she continued to do films, uh, but Broadway was really her passion and she really excelled uh, on Broadway. And that is where the story ends. I really think that this one was just, it was it was a little bit more wholesome than some of the other stories like Elizabeth Taylor. Uh, they were just, they were just, you know, with actors, sometimes it can just be, it can just, there's so much passion there, right? There's so much passion that it's really difficult to, you know, have a stable relationship. But with Humphrey and Lauren, I just thought that it was, it was so romantic. Uh, and it was romantic in that soft, gentle way, like true love kind of, true love isn't always like this fiery passion that burns from within. Sometimes true love is just safety. Sometimes true love is comfort. Sometimes true love is just finding that person that makes you giggle. And I thought that this story was just kind of perfect for that. Uh, you know, they had such a beautiful life together. Uh, she had two children with Bogart and then, uh, with her second marriage, uh, Jason Robard, she actually had another son. Uh, so she had, she had, she ended up with three children the the true loves of her life uh and Bo, you know her name was tied to humphreys for the rest of her life and she was actually asked in an interview if she ever uh like resented that uh if she ever resented the fact that anytime uh she would was interviewed or anytime her name was brought up 
if it bothered her that Humphrey's name was brought up as well. And she, she was never resentful of the fact that she was always known as, you know, bogey and slim. Uh, uh, sh they actually uh, nicknamed each other while they were filming their first movie together. Uh, their nicknames in the uh, in the film were Steve and Slim, and that's actually what they called each other throughout their entire marriage. Uh, she would call him Steve, and he would call her Slim. And they actually ended up naming their first child Steve after his character in uh, "To Have and To Have and To Have and Have Not." which I thought was such a, a wonderful little detail um, because it really just goes to show you how much uh, how much it really meant to them. I think it was really kind of awesome. So I hope this story left you with a little bit of a smile on your face today. I'm going in with the light lightest shimmer in the palette and I'm just kind of packing that onto the inner corner of my eye and feathering it outwards. I'm gonna go in with a uh, eye, an eyeliner. I'm gonna use this one. This is my e.l.f. No Budge Eyeliner in the shade Charcoal. This is perfect, absolutely perfect for this look. I'm gonna line I know this always looks so painful on camera. I promise you I'm not touching my eye. I'm going to do a nice thick line of this on my lower lash line because I'm going to smudge it out a little bit with a smudger brush. So I've lined both my upper and lower uh, water lines. And then I'm going to go back in to that smoky palette and I'm going to use that lightest gray shade on an e.l.f. smudge brush very, very lightly. I don't want my lower lash line to be too dark. And I'm just gonna smudge this out and blend out that eyeliner a little bit. But I love this eyeliner because once it sets, it goes absolutely nowhere. And it is kind of perfect. And this color just works so well with this eye look just kind of gently smoking out the lower lash line, uh, keeping the color pretty close to the lash line, but just kind of putting a little bit of color down there, kind of making sure everything really blends together. And I'm gonna, of course, put a little bit of mascara on. I'm gonna do, not a wing, but I'm just gonna do a really uh, thin line of black eyeliner along my upper lash line. This is the NYX Epic Ink liquid liner just like that and then some black mascara and guys we are done i'm gonna go in to the uh smoky palette one more time Ooh. and i'm gonna use that lightest silver color on a small kind of pencil brush and i'm gonna use this to highlight my brow bone just do a little bit of a highlight right underneath the highest point of my brow and then also add just a little bit of that color to the inner corner. Really beautiful shimmers in this palette. Highly reflected, highly reflective, super pigmented. Just kind of bring a little bit of that along the lower lash line to bring a little bit of light to the party. And that's our look. Guys, I hope you enjoyed. Again, I hope you enjoyed today's video. I really, really enjoyed telling it. Uh, if you guys want to know what I have on my lips, it is this. This is the Milani Understatement Lip Liner in the shade Audac Audacious Pink. I just have this all over my lips. I just kind of lined and then filled them in. And then I'm going to go over top of it with this. This is the Milani Max Keep It, Keep it Full Max Lip 
Plumping Lip Liqueur Lacquer. Uh, this is in the shade Little Secret. Uh, this is just a really, really amazing kind of nudie mauve lip gloss. It is definitely definitely plumping though uh, and it definitely kind of like tingles on the lips but it's not painful in any way I actually like the way that it feels it just feels super super minty kind of tastes a little bit minty too but guys this is our look today uh, I hope you enjoyed today's true love Tuesday I always enjoy uh, sitting here hanging out with you guys and telling you guys these absolutely wonderful love stories uh, let me know in the comments below if there's anybody you guys would like me to talk about next I am I have all kinds of ideas but any kind of input you guys have is always appreciated as always no filters no edits no fancy lighting it's just me sitting in front of my camera playing with my makeup telling you guys a story hoping you guys are liking what I'm doing uh, as always I I will have everything that I used in today's video in the description box below along with the links to all my other social medias if you guys are not following me on all my other socials please do that it would mean more to me than you guys will ever ever know uh before you leave make sure you give this video a thumbs up let me know you're liking the content <clears throat> and until next time I love you so so very much stay safe take care of yourselves and remember you're important bye